Thank you very much. Can choir, we appreciate you. And we thank the Lord for what you have prophesied. We have come here, and as we go, we'll not go back to the old, old thing. The Lord do it in your life. The Lord do it in the lives of the people you prophesy to. Church, good morning. God bless you. And bless you again. And bless you every day. Now, our, do I call him Reverend Bishop Chairman? He said, I came from, you know, somewhere there, and I came down here. We're talking about Jesus who came from the highest heaven. And he came to the low earth and came and then went down to the lowest to bear all our sin, all our shame, all the evil we have done. He bore everything. Not only that, he came down from on high and came so low to take the people who are low to the highest place. The Son of God became the Son of Man that he may take the sons of men and take them to be sons of God. He wants us to be like him. He that believeth in me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works, think about that. Jesus came, the highest of the highest. And he did what no other person has done on earth. And he said, you, as you believe on him, the works he did, you will do. Then he said, greater works than this shall ye do. Because I go to the Father. What does that mean? He's gone there, he's interceding for us. He paid the price, did everything. And so that you have the benefit of what he has done, he's now praying for you. Interceding for you. The anointing you receive here, you go out with the intercession of Christ, you will succeed in ministry. <laughs> Father, we well, thank you. We well, bless your name. You put so much value on us that you said the greatest gift you could send from heaven. He died for us. He rose for us. He's interceding for us. And he wants us to be the people you created us to be. Adam could not be the person you created him to be. But you've given us a chance greater than that of Adam, greater than that of Eve, that we will be the copy. A sample has been given, and then we are going to be conformed unto Christ accomplish it in every life and lord we pray the ministry of everyone here will shine brighter and brighter until the perfect day thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray you are blessed god bless you you can sit down as we round up the series of an anointing that we have been looking at, we've had the first message just to understand the anointing. We've had the second message, the understanding we had gave us expectation. And the expectation led us to the experience now, as we have understood as we're expecting as we're experiencing now what do we do with what we have got and what we will yet have the message today is reaping the end time harvest with the anointing that transforms reaping 
the end time harvest with the anointing that transforms when you look at the anointing that jesus himself had look at luke chapter 4 reading from verse 18 luke chapter 4 verse 18 it says the spirit of the lord is upon me the spirit of the lord was upon christ and of course you understand that he came and lived as the perfect man yes perfect god perfect man but to demonstrate how we the children of men could live he lived like a perfect man and he said all he did he did by the commandment of the father and he did by the anointing of the spirit the spirit of the lord is upon me then he says because he has anointed me if he needed anointing we need anointing he said the father has anointed him you remember acts 10 38 how god anointed jesus christ with the holy ghost and with power that's why he went about doing good healing all who are sick saving all who repent transforming the lives of the people that lean on him and believed on him has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor the poor are the people that have nothing to pay for their salvation nothing to pay for life eternal and it says he has sent me the father sent him for a purpose and he never left that purpose he sent him to heal the broken hearted many things break our hearts but the father sent him here so that it will heal and mend and restore the broken heart and it's to preach and proclaim deliverance to the captives and also he is to give the recovering of sight to the blind blind the people who are blind physically but all creation have been blinded spiritually and i say asked who is blind like my servant seeing many things perceiving nothing and then he tells us that to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the lord the anointing is for a purpose and the purpose is very important and as we have said the anointing is not just to shake it's not to run the anointing is not to jump the anointing is spiritual it's not to demonstrate physical strength and then um, before he left he told his own disciples acts chapter 1 verse 8 because now he was passing on the work unto them when jesus was here you know who he ministered to he ministered to the jews principally to the people of israel principally and yet the bible says god so loved the world not only israel but as you look at the people that jesus ministered to he ministered majorly mainly to those jews but he still knew that it was a minister was to give salvation to the rest to the whole world and so he told his own disciples now stay in jerusalem until ye be endued with power immersed in power enveloped in power and now he tells them acts 1 verse 8 and it says in Acts 1 verse 8, but he shall receive power. Amen. Amen. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The same Holy Ghost that came on Christ as a dove. He said, you stay there in Jerusalem and pray. And you will have power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me 
both in Jerusalem and in Samaria, in Judea, and in Samaria. Look at that word, both. You see the way many people take evangelism and the harvest, the same, ye shall be witnesses unto Christ first in Jerusalem. And when you finish, then you go to Judea. And when you finish there, you go to Samaria. And when you finish there, you get to the uttermost part of the earth. If you use that word first in Jerusalem, rather than both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth, if you say, well, we've not finished walking here, we've not finished evangelizing here, we've not finished telling everybody here in Jerusalem, and they have not all responded first in Jerusalem, and you stay there, you will never get to the next point to Judea. Why? As you are preaching, some are dying and new babies are being born. Do you know that in the world, all over the world, millions are born every month? Millions, millions of uh, children are born every month. So if you stay in Jerusalem, first in Jerusalem, and then when you finish there, you'll never go to Judea. But witnesses unto me both they go on simultaneously when jerusalem and now when i hold up after i hold up we're going to another place or oh, they say pastor you know uh, you know going too far you spread yourself so thin and you're not go deep no christ did not say that go to every place jerusalem judea Samaria and the where now? Uttermost part of the earth. That's what he told them. And that's what we are going to do. Amen. That's what we'll keep doing. And as we think about that, already we know how to get the anointing. We have the anointing. I have the anointing. You may not feel it, it's by faith. You have the anointing. What he gives, I receive. What I receive, I'm going to use for God. I'm going to concentrate this time on this new anointing. New anointing. When I say new anointing, I mean New Testament anointing. Now many people, when they say anointing, 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 they say anointing of Elijah, come on me. Mm -mm, that's not New Testament. The anointing of Elisha, Come on me. That's not New Testament anointing. The anointing of Moses was given for one purpose. Get the nation Israel to the land of Canaan, the promised land. Get them water out of the rock. Get them manna from heaven. That's not your anointing in the New Testament. In the New Testament, you're not, you know, praying for manna to fall. You are not praying for water to come out of the rock. In the, new, in the Old Testament, the old anointing, you're not looking for, you know, the, the pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud to guide you in the way. Look at that road there. There's a signboard here. You want to go from here to, you know, Port Harcourt or anywhere. You see all this. I follow those signs. The Lord God is not going to give pillar of fire, pillar of cloud to lead you now in the way. The anointing he had was for his calling. Look at Joshua. Joshua had anointing. What kind of anointing? Rise up. My servant Moses is dead. Therefore go before these people. Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That I have given to you. Given to Israel. Go before them. Wage war. Uh, Joshua was not converting the Canaanites and the Jebusites and Etites. He was not saving them and leading them to repentance. He was bringing judgment upon them. That's not the anointing we have in the New Testament. David. David. A man after my own heart, and Samuel poured the oil of anointing upon him, and the Spirit of God came on him in chapter 16, chapter 17. The anointing began to work, and 
he slew Goliath and all those Philistines. The Israelites ran after them and conquered them and destroyed them. That's not the anointing we have in the New Testament. The anointing of the New Testament is going into all the world and preach the good news, the glad tidings, the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And so you are not, you know, going back to the old time, old time anointing, anointing. Here is Elijah now. Elijah was sitting there by the rock, and a king had sent for him. And the king said, Get that man for me. And he knew why. And so Elijah, Elijah stood there, and he said, Man of God, come down. The king wants to see you. Uh, if I be a man of God, let fire come down, consume you, captain, and defeat him. And the fire came down and consumed them. The anointing I have is not like that. Because I came not to destroy, but to save. And now he gives us that mandate. He gives us that great commission and he says don't call fire down uh, that, that's what they, they those two apostles james and john that that's what they were looking at the samaritans will not receive you lord do you permit us to call down fire from heaven burn them up like elijah did no i didn't i'm not giving you elijah's anointing i'm giving you the new testament anointing testament means covenant the new covenant anointing and that new covenant anointing new testament anointing is to make us reap the harvest of the world for christ i pray you understand uh, because i hear many people sometimes will make mistakes in a singing sometimes mistake in our preaching sometimes mistake in our interpretation of a word in the bible the days of elijah they are here make me another elijah today well if you understand they are another elijah of the new covenant time of the new testament time that's good but you are thinking of elijah of that time and what he did and how he brought fire on this and brought this one down if you are thinking of that that is wrong but new testament anointing for me new testament anointing for the ministers and for everyone in jesus name now which in jerusalem let that power come upon you and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And they waited, and they all waited in the, in the upper room. And the day of Pentecost suddenly came. And then there was a sound from heaven. And a wind that blew in the whole building, in the whole house. And then tongues of fire came on each of them and the people gathered and as the people gathered uh, you know peter rose up and begin and began to talk to them if you think these people are drunk number one the anointing gave a spontaneous message he didn't have, he didn't know they were coming he didn't know what will happen and as they all gathered spontaneously he opened his mouth that's the anointing open your mouth wide and heaven will fill your mouth with the appropriate message and so he pointed out you kill you destroyed jesus christ is the son of god and he's a savior and then he quoted one or two verses of scripture we don't have to quote how many 40 verses of scripture sometimes i do that if i'm teaching but we don't have to do that and then he concluded by saying you are the guilty of this and the people said, men and brethren, what shall we do? That's the anointing. Brought conviction on them. And then Peter replied, repent. 
and be filled, baptized with the Holy Ghost, and repent and be baptized in water. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you. Now, we know that because we've read it over and over, but Peter never thought of that. That word for the gift is unto you came spontaneously. That's the anointing. And then uh, he told them, save yourself from this unto a generation. And 3,000 people believed. They repented. They believed that is the anointing at work. And they were told, all those people that believed, they need to be running after them, running after them. They were running after the apostles. And they were in fellowship. Fellowship was the word. And fellowship in prayer. And great signs and wonders were done by the apostles. That the anointing of the New Testament. That the anointing were receiving. That's the anointing we're going to manifest. That's the anointing we carry. And everywhere we carry that anointing, it will work in Jesus' name. Now, what kind of work will that do for the New Testament anointing that comes upon us? Again, I'm going to use that word, transform. Because we're seeing in the ministry of David, transform. We'll see the ministry of Elisha transform. Here we are now in the ministry of the apostles, the ministry of the New Testament ministers transform. What were they to do? Team. Teach the word to convert sinners to the Lord. Teach the word to confirm, to, com uh, to convert sinners to the Lord. The last word that Jesus gave his own disciples. Look at Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, in heaven and on earth. Then, what's the next word there? Tell me, what's the next word there? Go ye. I know that, you know, many people as I was say, growing as a Christian, I heard, go ye. And I, I felt I must rise up now and go. But understand, this is the last chapter of Matthew. Go ye. That starts with G. Now I learn that to get to G, I start with A. I come to B. I come to C. I come to D. I come to E. I come to F. And now I come to G. Go E. A. Abandon. Abandon your past life. Peter. You caught all that. You will catch men. Now, leave what you have and you abandoned everything. You must write your aim. And your aim must be clear and distinct. You abandon your sin. You abandon the past. And now, don't, don't go yet. Abandon and accept the Lord. As your personal savior, be, is to believe. Believe on him. You know, we cannot just go, 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 go. We we'll believe. And as you believe, something new happens in your life. It says, repent ye, abandon the sin, and believe the gospel. And then it says, see, come unto me. O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What if these people did not count A to abandon, B to believe, C to come? If you don't come, you cannot go. You come to Christ first. You come with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And you abandon, surrender everything unto the Lord and believe in a very definite way, in a peculiar way, 
this is the only savior of the world and i believe in him in a way i don't believe in any other person you come wholeheartedly unto him and then whatsoever he says unto you do it you do you do you do did he say to repent you do did he say to remain and abide with him do do you take him as the bridegroom of the bride do you take this man as the only man you're getting married to him and you abandon allegiance to every other man on earth i do and that's how we take jesus now i do he is my savior he is my lord he is my all in all do then you can follow follow me follow me what will this man do that's none of your business what if i will that he continues until i come don't bother about that you follow me it's the people that are taking those steps is not talking to them talking to peter talking to john talking to all those apostles you abandon you believe you come you do you follow now you can come to g now you can go go ye and as you go what do you do is spelt each out for them as to what you do because now he says after i said all power is given unto him on earth and in heaven he now says go ye therefore and teach go ye therefore and teach don't dabble into current affairs current affairs is good when you're talking outside to your neighbors you know the politics you know the civics you know what is going on talk about that but when you go as i told you to go you will teach 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 the basics of the gospel what the basic we are all sinners what the basic we cannot save ourselves what the basic only christ can save what the basic everyone who calls upon him and believes in him will be saved he says go teach them that after teaching them those basics and they believe baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and then he said lo i am with you to the end of the world there's another teach another teach uh, that's uh, uh, the next verse there verse 20 he says after that you're not discipling them you're not teaching them all things whatsoever i have commanded you it says you know at this time it's risen from the dead it's no more in the grave and as it comes to this side of the resurrection it says you teach them all things whatsoever i have commanded you and you know there are preachers they tell themselves they don't tell me because i will not listen to them they say um, all that jesus taught matthew mark luke and john they said everything is gone they say all we need to listen to now read the epistles about us uh -uh. read the epistles romans and corinthians and galatians and ephesians and and the you know philippians colossians read that one i but what jesus said he said you know that one that one is gone why is it gone when jesus said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and then he says on that basis i'll be with you till the end of the world he'll be with us i said he'll be with us tea in that word transformer is to teach them all things whatsoever i have commanded you now we come to our in the word transform restore dead backsliding saints judge goers to life or restore them back to life jesus himself himself started with uh, peter 
is said, Peter, Satan has desired to have you, to sift you like wheat. Then he said, I'm praying for you. But Peter said, do I need prayer? I'm okay. I'm all right. That's what they think. They think they are strong by themselves. They think I've been following Christ all these three years. Do I need prayer? Personal prayer? Do I need prayer? The priestly prayer of Christ? Do I need prayer? The prophetic prayer of the Lord that comes upon your life. It says, I will follow you anywhere. But Jesus overlooked that and said, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Because it was to backslide. The Lord saw that. The Lord did not make him backslide. But the Lord saw it. And then he says, when you are restored, you strengthen your brethren. You know how many people go on preaching, pushing, prophesying, going here and there, and yet they know in their hearts they are backsliding. Oh, but you see, we see manifestation in their lives. Yes, look at all these fans here, rolling and rolling. If we switch off the light, the fan will still keep on turning without that light because of the momentum it had gathered. All the time, electricity was there. There are people like that, they're backsliding, they are gone, and yet they continue activity, activity. And Jesus said, the time comes, you're restored. And then after that, after that restoration, you're strengthening your brethren. And they were told in James, James chapter 5, reading from verse 19, brethren, if any of you do hear, brethren, if any of you, brother, sister, do hear, brethren, if any of you, followers of Christ, do hear, brethren, if any of you that had been saved, by the grace of God. But if he hears from the truth. And one converts him. It was a brother. It was a sister. He heard from the truth. He came. He has now put his trust. His faith. His allegiance. Unto another Lord. He is now submitting his life. Unto another Lord. And you see him. The ministry of the anointing in our lives is to see that man and restore him. It's not just you, you know, shouting, singing, and waving, and all that. No, the anointing comes to transform. The anointing comes to teach. The anointing comes to restore that backsliding brother, that backsliding sister. I think, uh, you know, there are people in the church and they're taking brother as a title that's always there. Just like somebody is a man, is a man, whether it's lying down or standing up or swimming in the sea or getting into the well or is whatever is still a man. Many people have taken the title brother like that, sister like that, sister so and so. You see that that fellow is gone back. It's no more following Christ. It's no more living the life he ought to live as a believer. But they keep on saying, brother, brother. Now, it's not a title that is just ticked on you. Just because your God, you raised up your hand one day over there. But you continue in the Lord. If you continue in my word, then tell me. Are you my disciples indeed? So, if you see then one of the brethren err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he that converteth that sinner, he calls him sinner now. He called him that brother. He was a brother. They call him sister. He was his sister. But now converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death. Understand the Bible. 
shall save the soul of one of you, one of the brethren that has gone back. He needs restoration. Without that restoration, that individual is dead, dead to God. And it's just like a dead sinner that never came to the Lord. I, I see many, many people, preachers, I've met them, I've spoken to some of them. Their members are gone back into sin. And they say, they try to talk, but they measure their words because they don't want to have the air, the anger, the wrath of that man. They are careful in what they say. And eventually, because of the usefulness of that man in the church, the usefulness of that man in their ministry, they say, well, if it's lost, that's in his hand. If he dies in his sin, that's in his hand. But we need his tithe and offering. Uh, that's selfish now. You want to get his money, even though he's throwing his soul into the sea. That's selfish. That's wicked. He has talent. He has gifts. I want to make use of his gift because without his gift, my ministry will not prosper. And so, because I need his gift, I see he's gone astray. I see he's living in sin, but he will settle himself with God. Let him give me the service, the gift, the expertise he has so that I will prosper. I remember many years ago, uh, that's the time the, you know, IBM machine was, you know, was uh, kind of holding sway everywhere. And we had this uh, manual typewriter we were using in the office that time. And this fellow brought this IBM machine. Not only that, he sent his secretary to, you know, operate it for us. Anything we wanted to do. And the man assured me that whatever you want, he has the money, he has, you know, whatever it takes. And I should just tell him, and it's done. I said, thank you. I thought he was a brother. Just about that week or two after I heard that the man now abandoned the first wife and was living with the second woman. And I called the secretary sent to us. I'm hearing this about your master. He said, Pastor, I won't tell you a lie. That is true. I said, carry this IBM machine. Carry it back to him. <laughs> Why do we need this IBM machine? If the fellow is not living in the grace of God. So the man got it and he came to me. He said, uh, uh, Pastor, as I heard you said, we should, they should return the IBM machine. I, you know, I gave it. Uh, and, I, and then he said, you know, Pastor, I had not taken this other woman when I sent that machine to you. So the machine is clean. I said, but if you continue like this, where will you spend eternity? That's the thing that should be important to the person that has the anointing. And I said, repent and make right your way. Do restitution. After you've done that, then we'll talk about machine. First, about your soul. When you know, when you see that somebody is gone astray, you don't just keep on using their gifts so that your own ministry will prosper, your own ministry will grow, and the people that are growing the ministry, they're going on their way to hell. Restore them. That's what the anointing does. God will help you. Amen. And God will keep on helping me. Say amen for me. Because you know, for me, it's one thing to tell the stories of the past. 
to say this is what i used to do but the question is do i do that now can i do that now the ministry has expanded we're here we're there and if there are people that are key to the success of the present day ministry and i hear that they've gone astray they're living in sin and yet they're serving what do i do do i consider the bible or do I consider the growth of my ministry at the present day? The Lord wants us to remain, remain faithful until the very end that the people who walk with you, the people you serve, and you serve with the gospel, no matter how close they are to you, if they are not living right, we shall have the boldness, the courage, the conviction to say, my friend, we don't want to deceive them. My brother, my brother, my brother, my friend. I hear this is, I hear this is happening. Mm, yes, pastor. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make up. I'll make up. I'll go and make up. Drop that thing. Uh, pastor, if I drop this area of service, the ministry will collapse. You are not the one that makes a ministry to collapse or not to collapse. There is a God in heaven that helps the calling and the ministry and the work he has committed into our hands. Never you think that you are so indispensable. You're living in sin and you're greater than God. That if you are not there, the ministry will collapse. That's blasphemy. God is here. Christ says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And he can do much more than you can do. So preachers, pastors, ministers, don't be afraid. Say the truth. Live the truth. Handle the word of God just like it is in the word. Get them restored and then they can move on i'm waiting for a good amen yeah. a awaken careless saints to liveliness awaken them many souls are sleeping and jesus came after they had prayed in the mouth of gethsemane and he found Peter sleeping, James sleeping, John sleeping. And he said, ah, get up. Can you not pray with me? Wait with me. Intercede for me with me. Just one hour. He went back again. He came back. They were still sleeping. The people, their souls are sleeping. Their heart, spirit are sleeping. Their personality, they're sleeping. And I'm not talking of those who have worked and worked and worked hard for the Lord during the night and they didn't sleep in good time. And now when they come to the meeting, the flesh is demanding from them, give me some attention and sleep. So we we'll find them sleeping, not those people. Those are good, good people. They just have worked last night. But the people that no matter how many hours they sleep on Saturday night, they come to your church and they're sleeping and sleeping. And it's only when you say, in Jesus' name we pray. And people shout. Yeah. Then they wake up and they look at, oh, we're still in church. Wake them up. And the people who are so asleep, when temptation comes, they don't recognize temptation anymore. They just fall into that. When an offer comes from the devil, an offer comes from the world, they don't recognize the difference between their offer that comes from the Lord and the one that comes from the devil. They just take everything, awaken them. The people who are here and there, and because they've been busy here and there, the souls they were to be watching over 
Those souls are gone. Awaken them, we're told in Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, we're told in 1 Corinthians, rather, chapter 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness and sin not. In our earlier years in the Christian life, we knew that. We are very conscious of that. We are saved not to continue in sin. We are saved to be free from sin. And to live a life above reproach. But... After so many years now of knowing the Lord, we find some of the believers chewing what they were not sure at that time. Taking, you know it, what they were not take at that time. And we see some kinds of careless, careless relationship between men and women between so-called brothers and sisters. So much liberty, so much freedom between the men and the women. And they call this now fellowship. Uh -uh. Did it have fellowship in those earlier days before you came? Of course we did. Did it have fellowship in the New Testament? Acts chapter 2. The people, they had fellowship, not the fellowship of the flesh. But fellowship around the world. Fellowship around the name of the Lord. is not fellowship of the works of the flesh. Not fellowship of, uh, you know, flesh touching flesh. Flesh embracing flesh. And then their lives, and their lives is just like so, so, and so. It's, it's like the only thing they can claim, we didn't go into this. Don't wait for that. That is not the way we started. And if we're going to live the life that the Lord expects us to live, we're way to righteousness and sin not. In the, you know, earlier years, I can tell for myself, I can tell for the few people that I knew. If we were looking for job, we don't, we don't pay bribes to anyone. And I still remember that, you know, in our, on our roads here, one of our brothers was driving. As he was driving in, uh, yeah, and the checkpoint they stopped him. Bring your particulars. They brought out all the particulars. They looked through. Okay, it's all right. But um, before you can pass this place, you give us, mention the amount. And the fellow said, no, I don't do things like that. Because, you know, if they do it, and they do it, and they do it, and we are all doing it, and we'll come to job praying, we'll all stamp out corruption from our nation. We ourselves are part of the corruption. How will God answer that kind of prayer? So the man stayed there. One hour went, they called him man you would have gone to your destination now if you just give us this amount he said no i don't do that okay they made him sit in the sky again for another one hour two hours then they called him again and said ah, young man what's your problem he said no problem why are you not giving what we have told you other people have passed and he gave what were us there? Were you just there? He said, because I'm a Christian. But they said, all those other people that passed and gave us, they're not Christians. I don't know about them. I know about myself. I am a Christian. So they said, which church do you go? What did they say? They said, they were like, oh. Then that policeman spoke to all the other police people. He said, this man is deep alive. If you make him stay there for five hours, you'll not get one naira from him. So they said, you 
can go. I said, they said that man carried the anointing with his action, with his refusal not to give the bribe was preaching the gospel to them and eventually they asked him of what church and when he mentioned deeper oh yes we know that deeper life they are not just deeper in doctrine they're deeper in action that's what the lord wants us to demonstrate awake to righteousness and sin not then paul the apostle added for the corinthians for some have not the knowledge of god i pray we'll all have this knowledge and the anointing will work in every one of our lives in jesus name Amen. now we come to the next uh, letter here we're looking at and nourish the bride with the bread of life nourish the bride of christ in our churches we have the bride of christ we have the people who have come out of the world and they are sold unto the lord and we're ministering to them every time your ministry should not weaken them your ministry should strengthen them and your action ministry preaching prayer counseling you take note that you're talking to the bride of christ and what to say to the bride you are responsible to the bridegroom and so we're told in ephesians chapter 5 it says in ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 5 it says husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church amen i think we we need to ask ourselves you're a minister, you're a pastor, you're a leader in the church. Do you love the bride of Christ, the church, as Christ has loved you and has loved the church? And then husbands and wives. After all these many years that we've been preaching to husbands and wives, you think we don't need to do that again, but we still need to do that husbands love your wives it doesn't say compromise with your wife husbands love your wives it doesn't say change the word of god change your conviction because your wife says i don't like this kind of conviction this kind of consecration this kind of surrender to the lord and this kind of absolute yieldedness unto the lord i don't like that one if you love me you must compromise and you must water down the word of christ no madam because we met christ before you came in and we committed our lives to christ before you came in and we gave him total total allegiance absolute surrender before you came in yes the husband will love the wife but not to the point of disobeying christ well we're not disobey christ but then he said he gave himself for you that he might cleanse some water by the word, the water of the word. And so that you have a church without sport, without wrinkle, or any such thing. I pray we will so prepare the church for the coming of the Lord. That when the Lord will come, will find the church the way the church ought to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we go to the next letter here we are coming to what's the next letter here now yes. sorry yes. f yes. we've done n 
Now, as sanctified, sanctified. Uh, we so help the church that the church becomes sanctified and lives in sanctification. Whatever your definition of sanctification is, does not matter. Let's go back to the Bible. What's the meaning of sanctification in the Bible? To make holy, not just to assume holy, not just to reckon holy. God does not reckon holy. What really in a practical way is not holy. It's not I claim it. I have it. No, this one, we have to go on our knees and consecrate and totally submit and surrender ourselves to Christ and understand what the blood of the Lamb can do, can produce an Enoch that walks with God 300 years without blemish, without spot, and without anything that will disqualify him in the sight of the Lord. It's by grace, yes, and it's for godliness. Sanctification by grace, yes, is for godliness. And when God does that in our lives, and is able to maintain what he has done, that is sanctification, and we help the church uh, to have what Christ will be looking for when he comes jesus said shall i find faith on the earth when i come he's coming again and what will he find in our lives what will he find in the lives of the people we're ministering to let's help the church and stabilize them in the experience that christ died for now we can go to f F is uh, to focus on true fellowship in the Lord. True fellowship in the Lord. The Lord is the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world. Whatever fellowship you have that cannot see the light of day, that's not true fellowship. Whatever fellowship you have, with that man not your husband a man in your church a man outside your church what a fellowship you have with him that cannot see the light of day that's not true fellowship whatever fellowship you have with a man that if your husband were there you wouldn't do that that's not fellowship in the light and in the Lord. Whatever fellowship we have must be fellowship in the light. Give me a good amen. amen. And whatever you're doing with a man, with a wife, with a woman, no matter who that man is, no matter how useful that man is. You see, there are people that think, this man is serving us well just to make him happy how to have this kind of fellowship with him just to make him happy and if your husband saw that kind of fellowship your husband would say what this is what you're doing was somebody serving us that's not fellowship that one is sin that one is evil what a fellowship the pastor you know we who are pastors in my own personal ministry for my own protection we uh, i have the counseling room and then there's a glass door glass all through so that the security man standing there outside the counseling room can see everything that is happening in the counseling room if I stand, he can see. If I wave, he can see. We have that glass so that the life of the pastor is not a hidden life. So that the people out there can see inside there. In fact, everywhere I go, not just today, from a long, long time ago, 
the whatever we call them security or whatever they are always with me if i'm you know in the plane there's somebody always there with me apart from my wife and if i'm in the house anywhere they are all there with me and even if somebody came to say uh, pastor so and so did this with me I don't have to answer the people who are with me every time they will give the answer do you so protect yourself like that apostle apostle goes into you know a room he wants to do deliverance apostle goes into you know a chamber he wants to do deliverance and locks the door nobody there and then the lady is there and the lady is telling stories rolling eyes and everything well you say she has a demon yes i accept even her action even her invitation even her methodology method Dology, like Delilah, you can tell this one has. Tell me now. <laughs> and so eventually, Apostle soils his life, destroys his life, and the anointing of something is not able to deliver him from Delilah. Now he loses his sight. That's not the first thing. He lost his sense. He lost the spirit. He lost even the scriptures. Now he lost his very ministry. He took out his eyes. And you know, there are some things we lose, we can get back. That some things we lose, we cannot get back. Something you not get back those eyes. The spirit came back, the power came back, the forgiveness was there. There are some things forgiveness will not bring back. He lost those eyes forever. We want to be wise that the anointing we have, we go out not to destroy ourselves. What's my gain? I'm casting out a devil from one woman, one madam, one lady. And then a greater demon comes on the person that is casting out devil. God forbid. God forbid. It will not happen in our lives in Jesus' name. But fellowship, fellowship, true fellowship is that which we have, we have seen this first John chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 3 here that which we have seen. And that which, that's what we declare unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ it says in verse six it says if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we do we lie and we do not the truth but verse seven if we walk in the light as he is in the light then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sin amen and as a deserve the Lord to make us clean and remain clean from all sin. Now we come to the next letter. That's O. That's occupy a soul winning with leaders and the laity. That is, we so teach our leaders, our ministers, our pastors our workers that as christ has said 
we all occupy until he comes and the laity that means the people the members of the church we also instruct them we inspire them we guide them and lead them to really evangelize to carry out what jesus had said in luke chapter 19 verse 10 it says for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost and after that he said in verse 13 he said therefore it's verse 12 a certain noble man went into a far country that christ now has gone into the far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to come jesus to return and jesus is coming returning again in jesus name and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them what did he say and said unto them what did he say what did he say to you? Say that again. I see come. It's still to come. Are you occupying now? Yes, in theory. Or yes, in practice. You know, there are people that they, and these people, they read the Bible. These people who come to ask me and talk to me, they, you know, if I ask them, they can even quote it from, you know, from memory. What's Luke chapter 19, verse 13? Oh, they said, occupy till I come. But they are coming to ask me a question. They say, Pastor, when are you going to retire? I said, Remind me again, Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Remind me there. Then ask me the next question. When are you going to retire? Do you see contradiction there? They know. The Lord has said, Occupy till I come. And out there asking, When are you going to throw the words of Jesus aside? When are you going to take on the principles of the world? There, they retire. And then you bring that to the man, to the woman, to the church that God had said, Occupy till I come. And you want the words of Christ to be put down. And the practice of the world to be lifted up we're going to occupy until he comes Amen. you will occupy until he comes Amen. and i will keep on doing it until you know it's someone a great privilege you are my that the lord will say i should take his word and take it to the people that need to hear that's what he did on the cross of calvary that he will not be here to be telling them directly and then he points to me and he points to you and he says go tell them he has angels myriads of angels in heaven he could have sent them well he sent angels before he sent angels to sodom and gomorrah he sent angels to abraham he sent angels to the mother of something he sent angels to people in the old testament but now he says that era is gone that we are now to preach the gospel with the anointing and he has given us the anointing and we're going to do it something that angels not that they will not do they will do it if god told them to do it but that it cannot do it he says to you to me occupy till i come we will we'll do it in Jesus' name. Our is to revive righteousness 
and holiness as lifestyle revive righteousness holiness as lifestyle and that's what the lord has called the church to do that the world will know that the church is different from the world it tells us in luke chapter 1 verse 74 it says that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear and it says in verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life and that's what we have to revive in the church i know that good music is coming into the church and worship coming into very good wonderful but the music as good as it is will not ordinarily take people to heaven if they do not have that grace that purifies that cleanses that makes us holy i know that many other good things are coming this one this one that one a good and we need them and we'll use them but those things will not take people to heaven ordinarily without the preaching of the true gospel the full gospel the life transforming gospel and so we preachers if we abdicate a position a calling and we abandon what we're to do and we say praise the lord that something will do it that thing there will do it and of course my singers my choir my band will take the church on they'll feel thank god we came to church today we don't even need the preacher the pastor now if they feel like that we're wasting life in ministry we are to revive righteousness and holiness as lifestyle not just you know today i happen to you know the dead clock is right twice a day look at that clock it's dead the battery is gone the power is gone and then you look at the wristwatch that is still working uh, and you see it's 6 30 and then you look at the dead clock it's 6 32 that clock is right once in the evening and once in the morning but it's dead there are people that have holiness like that it just so happens that once or twice a day they say the right thing they do as the right thing no but the righteousness that is lived as a lifestyle the righteousness the holiness that we have as a lifestyle let us rise up as ministers and revive that and the lord will bless your ministry the lord will equip you the anointing will do the right thing in your life in jesus name transform transform what's t t r a n s f o r Emma move mountains with the mountain moving anointing from the Lord. The mountains there. Don't be moved by the mountain. Many of us are moved by the mountain. Here I am. I prayed. I've consecrated. 
I've given all. And then I come out and I see a mountain, whatever it is, that tries to stop you, that tries to delay you, that tries to take your attention. And here we are. Look at the mountain. I would have gone and manifested the anointing. I would have gone and I will demonstrate the anointing. But look at the mountain. Paul the apostle said, no, no. Of these things moved me. The things I see, the things I hear, the things I feel. It says, None of these things move me, neither count I my life so dear, so precious, so indispensable unto me, but that I might finish the calling, the work. That the Lord has given me to do in preaching the gospel of the grace of God. Move those mountains. Don't be moved by the mountain. If you didn't care of any mountain, of any jesting, of any gesture, if you didn't care of any criticism, if you didn't care for any anything that anyone will say or do, you wouldn't have stopped. You jump up over that hurdle and you'll move on. I said you'll move on. We started by the grace of God Deep Alive, 1973 August. And from that very beginning, I had contrary voice, the people that said, don't do the Bible study like that. Just, you know, uh, just sit around and then you sit in the circle to you so that they don't know who is teaching, who is not teaching. And they said, I should do conversational thing. I asked, you know, we'll read this. What do you think? What do you think? And then I give my own. They said, I should give my own opinion. And they said, I should not be the final voice. Because then, if I'm the final voice every time, they will think I am the leader. Let another person, a lady there, a man there, whatever he says, Let's take that from the Lord. That's what they told me. And I said, thank you, sir. But I'm not going to do that. What the Lord I called me to is to stand like Peter. Not in the same circle with all those Pharisees. And what do you think? What do you say? No. And I continued this way. 1974 came. 75 came. 1980 came. 81, 85. All those years have come and gone. Now this is 2024. And I keep saying the same thing. The word of God. That will make sinners to shake. And to tremble and to be convicted and to rush to Calvary and to say, Lord, I know I am a sinner. I need forgiveness. I need salvation. And by the grace of God, I've continued like that. You will continue in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, I, I've been in places that, you know, somebody will call me after that meeting and say, Oh, well, thank God for what you said. But you know, uh, you are confrontational, you are too direct, you mention, and you even point at people, and that poor fellow there may think you are pointing to him, you say, you adulterous, if you don't repent, you will go to hell, they say, come, 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 don't talk like that, um, control yourself, if you cannot uh, do without pointing your hand, put your hand in your pocket. And then just say, God loves everybody. Don't say, God is angry with the sinner every day. Well, I used to say that. Do I still say that? Yeah. Of course, that's the word of God. It's not my opinion that will save people. It's the word of God that will save people. And I've... Uh, I'm not retiring, but I'm calling you before I retire. Come, stay by my side. Yeah. What the Lord has done all these more than 50 years, if you do the same thing, 
And if you go to every community, I can tell you the places I have gone in River State and the places I've gone in all the states of Nigeria and the work, the preaching, the traveling did not make me weak. Am I weak? Are you looking at a weak person? In mind, I'm so strong. In spirit, I'm so strong. In body, I'm still strong. I just want to pass to you everything God has done in my life. United together, we can take this country for the Lord. United together, we can take this continent for the Lord. United together, we can go beyond where we have been. And we can bring millions of souls that have not heard, we can bring them to here. It's now your turn. I said it's now your turn. You have the anointing. You've got the anointing. But don't just keep it in your little chamber, in the house, in the conference here. Go out, manifest that anointing. Amen. Teach them. Relieve them. Resolve their problems. Help them. And help them to come to know there is nothing they need in life that Christ cannot provide. Let's rise up now and say, Lord... This anointing I have got. I will manifest, use, explore, do it. For the name of the Lord's sake. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Don't carry on like you know you have always done. Don't leave here and go back to the old, old style, old life. New Testament anointing gives you the courage, the boldness, the fiery disposition. To live, to minister, to teach, like he wants you to teach. Teach the sinners that Jesus is Savior. Holy Savior, mighty Savior, great Savior, that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Teach them. Teach them until they are converted. Convicted, converted, consecrated to the Lord. Restore the dead backsliders. Don't just carry on. Brother, sister, brother, sister. They're living in sin, brother, sister. As bad as, as evil, as sinful as the world, brother, sister, no. Stop deceiving the members of the church who are backsliding. You are taking gifts from them.
Restore them. Restore them. That's what the anointing does. Awaken the careless souls. Careless in action. Careless in character. Careless in behavior. Careless in their interaction between men and women. Awaken them to righteousness. Nourish them. The saving word, the sanctifying word, the stab stabilizing word. Nourish them. Nourish the bride or the bread of life. Stabilize them, the saints, in sanctification and love. They're not shaking anymore. They are not wondering what they believe or what they don't believe. Stabilize the saints in sanctification and love. Focus on true fellowship. Not fleshly fellowship, focus. Control fellowship. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we deceive ourselves and we do not the truth. Occupy. In soul winning with the leadership and with the leche. Revive righteousness and holiness in lifestyle. Not just once in a while, you take your stand. Lifestyle, character, from day to day, every moment, every time. Revive the consciousness. The passion, the desire for righteousness and holiness in lifestyle. Move the mountains. Don't allow the mountains to move you. There are people that might disobey you to your face. There's a mountain. Don't be moved by that. There are people that will reject the word. There's a mountain. Don't be moved by that. The people who mean to go to heaven will hear the word accept the word believe the word consecrate to meet the demands of the lord and move on move on move on in spite of mountains 
move on. In Jesus' name we pray. I said in Jesus' name we pray. Say after me, Lord, I accept the word. Lord, I believe the word. Lord, I commit myself to the word. Lord, I will declare and do the word of the Lord. Lord, I enlist to continue carrying the gospel of Christ. Lord, I will follow without any deviation. Lord, from this day, I go. Lord, from this day, I go. With my heart, with my soul, with my mind, with all my resources, with everything I have, with everything I will have. With every partner I have, with every companion I have, I go. The Lord will go with you. His power will go with you. His grace will go with you. As you go, teach. As you go, restore. As you go, awaken. As you go, nourish the people. Amen. As you go, stabilize them in the Christian life. Amen. As you go, focus. Amen. Don't look this way, look that way, look this one, that way, focus. Amen. And the Lord will be with you. Amen. As you go, occupy. Amen. As you go, revive. Amen. As you go, move, 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 and keep on moving. Amen. The God of glory, go with you. Amen. The Lord of power, go with you. Amen. The spirit of the living God will be the energy within. You will not stop. Amen. Raise up those hands now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we we'll thank you. We well, bless your name for the word you have spoken to us. Now we know, we understand the anointing, we experience the anointing, and now we're going to reap the end time, end time harvest with this anointing. I pray, Lord, your people will not disappoint you. You will not be disappointed in your people. That everyone will go forth in the strength and the might and the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. This nation, every local government, every village, every town, every city, this country, every region, every state, this nation and other nation will be brought on their knees before the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you are sending forth your army. A mighty army is going forth. No power will resist you. No power will be able to withstand you. No power will stop this evangelistic movement. Lord, use us any way, every way, anywhere everywhere until our last breath in jesus name god in heaven will come like hezekiah you told him it's all over pack it up 
set your house in order. And Ezekiel said, Lord, I still have something to do for you here. I don't want to go now. And you sent Isaiah back to him, and you gave him 15 years extra. Your people here, they've come this far, and there's still much land to be conquered. Lord, in your love, in your mercy, your compassion, in your impartiality, give them more years to live and work. If you want to give any of us 15 extra years, Lord, I receive. Say, Lord, I receive. Long life without sickness. Long life without hindrance. Long life without anything stopping you on the way. You can go now in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord, in the health that comes from heaven. Go labor. Go preach. Go occupy. He will meet you everywhere you go. He will show up. He will manifest his power on you, on your ministry, in your church, in the evangelistic field. The time has now come. The keys in your hand. Open the doors for the sinners to come into the kingdom. It is done for me. It is done in my ministry. It is done everywhere I go. You will see the manifestation and demonstration. Of the mighty power of God in your life in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray